Okay, so we've got our holes drilled. That's a half inch. The one furthest away is a three eighths. And I've got our new bushings in. They are ringed. Let me put a little light on here. Ooh, there we go. They're all ringed out. Why does that thing look blurry? Too close? Okay, so uh, what we've got is the car sitting on jack stands. And this is this is a nice helpful little hint here when you're doing the rear. You want to do the front part of the leaf spring first. We have a jack stand on each side. We have a floor jack under the diff. If you take this shock loose on the side you're working on, it will allow the front of the spring to dip down far enough where you could put the bushings in and ream it out and drill your holes. Otherwise, you're you're having to put a pry bar in there and fuss with it and try and pry on it while you're trying to drill holes and press bushings in. It's not fun that way. Um, so once we get the front done, we're going to move to the back here. And so far, what we're looking at is um, thick bushings all the way around on the rear leaf springs on this model, 2004 to 20. 13-ish. I say ish with a little hesitation because you never know when they actually started and stopped. It wasn't on January 1st of 2013. I assure you that. Alright, we'll be back. Okay, so we're on the rear. The rear part of the rear leaf spring right where the shackle is. We've got our new bushings installed and these will be the let me pull it down a little bit. These will be the thicker shoulder, but shorter uh, length. Uh, so they don't, you know, the other ones are a little bit longer. Um, hoping they'll last certainly longer. Uh, but these have to be a little bit shorter because of this stupid shackle they've got, which offers less support. Um, when you're in a turn, you know, in this direction, it will typically allow it to rock further, and that's what is helping bust out their cheap rubber bushings that they're putting in the springs. So the front, all these. Well, let's see, we'll start over. Okay. So we got the rear shackle ready to go. We got our short bolt in there. We got it all reamed out. And without it even being bolted at the at the bottom, you can't you can't wiggle this freaking thing. And I ain't even got this bolt all the way in. Um, after we did our little bit of grinding on the box tubing where it was rounded right there for the bottom piece that used to be here, um, it pushed up there a little bit, and then we had to tap it in because it's uh, it's a lot tighter tolerances than factory. Um, so we've got uh, we got our bolt in there, and now the other one on the other side did not hit that piece of metal right there, which surprised me. It went right past it. So we're going to loosen these two right here, and that will allow this to wiggle around a little bit because they have uh, not elongated, just larger holes than. Uh, then the bolt is in there. Hold on, let me get geared up. Where's my stuff? Okay. Let's see if we can loosen them up real quick so you ain't waiting on me all night. And this is 916. Where's my 13? Where's my. I got a 13 or a half inch laying there somewhere. Nice, darn it. Don't I? Hold on, we're gonna have to pause. Okay, I just noticed something else. We're learning as we go. We're learning every day. When I loosen these two bolts right here that uh, have the nut clips on the back, they do not have nuts. Uh, this actually, it relieved the pressure on the tubing and allowed this to uh, move a little bit freer so uh, I guess I would tell you to 
uh, when you're putting this style in 04 to 13 to loosen these two bolts and that's going to help that go in a little bit easier and i just realized that because i had to loosen eh, i had to loosen them two because it's interfering with my bolt That's all we needed and knock that little metal plate back a little bit so we could clear this has got an Allen head uh, socket in it an Allen socket head so we don't need to put a wrench on that uh, now that we got that on we can put our jam nut on the back side and we're not going to snug this up just yet we're going to go ahead and get all this put in and together um, before we uh, tighten everything up because uh, what I have noticed uh, for sure on one thing on here is a lot of their engineering, uh, they didn't really take a whole lot of time to line stuff up properly. Um, you'll find that on the front suspension when you go to set your kingpin bushings and your upper clevis bushings that it's off on every one of these cars. It's just minor, but you actually have to force it a little bit to get it back in the hole. So we may go back over that again sometime soon. All right. Okay, so we got our new bushings put in. Um, and if you're doing it on the car like I am, this is how we do most of them. Uh, we're not taking the old leaf spring out and hooking the brakes and all that, you know, the shock and all that garbage. Um, you can take a piece of all thread and two fender washers and two nuts. And you slip that all thread uh, through your hole with a washer nut on that side and then a washer nut on this side and as you tighten one nut or the other it's going to pull both the bushings right into the uh, socket the eye of the spring and that will seat them for you uh, it's pretty easy to do under the car i may make a video on that it's very helpful um, and very useful little tool just a piece of all thread um, you know, you don't find a bolt that has enough thread on it to do it. You end up using several different size bolts and, well, you know, that's not fun. So we're ready to uh, go ahead and ream out these two new Delrin bushings here. Make sure I got this on slow this time. Gosh darn it. Come on now. One more time. Just for good luck. And then we're going to take the air and blow all the uh, garbage out of there. The plastic or whatever the hell these things are made out of. I read all about it. I read the, the, the composite, but I forgot what it is. And just blow that stuff out. And we're ready to put the final bolt in this coffin here. So uh, I noticed um, when we're drilling out these holes, especially drilling through this way, you come out the other side over here. Doesn't really matter much to nut up, take care of that. But if you have burrs on the inside of this. Uh, shackle right here from where your drill bit went through and I can feel one right there uh, I just take a die grinder to it and knock off them little burrs so we don't have trouble uh, trying to you know line everything up let me go ahead and do that real quick where's my die grinder I can't I can't find nothing let's see if we can get in there Sorry if that got a little loud. Uh, you can feel back in there, and uh, pretty much feels like I got it all off. So, uh, I hate hoses. I hate extension cords. I can't wait to retire. I'm gonna take them all and throw them away. I'm gonna take that back. Okay, it's wanting to 
the spring back down. So we're going to put a little crank in the jack here and get her to come up. Is it right there? Okay. There we go. All right. So now we're ready for our last bolt. And that last bolt was... I should have been a little better prepared, but... Uh, oh, it's not that one. A little bit longer than that one. Oh, I think I see it. That's the one right there. Okay, so we should just slide in the hole here. And it should come out the other side. Come on, really? It should come out the other side. Let me put my uh, my air tool on there and see if it will pull itself in with the threads. Because that's where we're hitting. We're stopping on the threads in there. We're hitting the other side of that thing. And as good as my drilling is laying on my side like this, I'm hoping to sell enough of these bush and get y'all to get me a nice lift in here. So I don't have to lay down like this no more. Where's my damn socket at? Man, I lose more stuff. I swear. And there ain't no one here to blame it on. It's all me. It's all me, everybody. I don't know. Where I, come on now. I haven't left. I've been working right here. Now I can't, I bet, oh, there it is right there. I got you, little turd. Let's see if that, pull that in there. Oh, yeah, sure, of course, video wasn't on it. Yeah, it just pulled itself right, gosh darn, right into that. I think my, my headlight thing is messing up my camera here a little bit. But that pulled it right in, and then we put a nylock nut on the back side of that one and tighten it down. Don't forget to hook your shock back up. Very helpful to take that loose so you can drop the spring down far enough to get your bushings in. And I need one for the top too, don't I? And yeah, make sure you put all your hardware on, tighten it down. And like I said, we ain't gonna tighten none of this stuff down until everything's in place, lined up, so we don't fight with it later. You know, you tighten the top and then the bottom's out. Uh, it's always something. I almost got it. Oh, I almost got it. Almost. Come on now. Oh, there's Ozzy. There we go. Okay. All we have to do is tighten them bolts. Put our shock hardware back on and tighten that bolt and tighten the other one and this got a full suspension rebuild and we're not going to have any more tire wear hard steering clunky noises and all that garbage and it is uh, of course on the upper control arm front suspension it becomes greasable we're not drilling and tapping into these leaf springs i'm sorry um i've broken off way too many taps in my day uh, the uh, the composite material that we're using really doesn't even require that it has grease in it. If you want to be Mr. Hero and drill out these leaf springs, tap them. I'll be more than happy to send you all the quarter 28 grease certs that you can stand. Um, but it doesn't require it. We do it on the front. Uh, we have a lot of folks that hunt and they don't want any noise coming out of that electric golf car of theirs. They want it to be super quiet, and I think we, we, we hit the nail on the head with this. So um, if you have in the market for a good suspension, uh, just, you know, look us up. Beige Golf Cars down in Edgewater, Florida, 386-423-0975. Uh, we have kits available almost all the time. And uh, you'll be very impressed, um, and very surprised at how well it all goes together and everything works. So, look us up. Thanks. Okay. So we've got our holes drilled. 
And that's a half inch. The one furthest away is a 3 8 and I've got our new bushings in. They are ringed. Let me put a little light on here. Ooh, there we go. They're all ringed out. Why does that thing look blurry? Too close? Okay, so uh, what we've got is the car sitting on jack stands. And this is this is a nice helpful little hint here when you're doing the rear. You want to do the front part of the leaf spring first. We have a jack stand on each side. We have a floor jack under the diff. If you take this shock loose on the side you're working on, it will allow the front of the spring to dip down far enough where you can put the bushings in and ream it out and drill your holes. Otherwise, you're, you're having to put a pry bar in there and fuss with it and try and pry on it while you're trying to drill holes and press bushings in. It's not fun that way. Um, so once we get the front done, we're going to move to the back here. And so far, what we're looking at is um, thick bushings all the way around on the rear leaf springs on this model, 2004 to 2013-ish. I say ish with a little hesitation because you never know when they actually started and stopped. It wasn't on January 1st of 2013, I assure you of that. All right, we'll be back.